We're already at the point where we can do simple thought recognition and if somebody gets an arm chopped off in an industrial accident you can take nerve signals from the, uh, from the stump and you can link that to the robotic arm that you replace it with. So we're starting already to make some fairly simple connections between our bodies and the machine world. And welcome back to CNN Future <laughs> Summit of Man and Machine. Let's continue our discussion. We're going to talk a little bit about what we were talking about before the break, also the idea of cybernetics. Uh, this, this whole notion to me of augmenting, if you like, human performance, either physically or, or intellectually, is fascinating. It's going to change what it means to be human. Do you, uh, do you agree with that? Let's start with you, Anne. Uh, I, I don't agree with that. I think augmenting activities is fine. I think where it starts to get difficult is when you, if you like, substituted the human brain for some sort of robotic brain. I think that's when it gets difficult. Otherwise, I'm all for augmenting uh, whatever uh, physical attributes we have to today. Yeah, do you agree with that, Joy? No, I, I don't, actually. Um, but <laughs> it's, it's, I see it as, as augmenting, not necessarily replacing. And let's say that I have Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's or I'm disabled if I could somehow um, if there is technology and there is and a lot of you are working on that technology why wouldn't I why, why wouldn't I want to take advantage of that to improve and my life and make my life a lot longer I don't think what I said was inconsistent with that okay. I, I was really taking the the healthy human okay. and trying to make a superhuman or talking about that not replacing or repairing a defective human. If so you like. when, when, you're, when you're older and you have no uh, more mobility in your legs and your arms, mm. um, or you would want to be able to get knowledge and information instantaneously and share it with the world, you wouldn't want to take advantage of that? I do already. I look at Google. Ah, now, that, now that's <laughs> interesting. And as part of my humble research, this program, they're actually talking about the potential to develop a computer chip that goes in your brain where you can have that kind of knowledge it's a google in your head and you think of a question it gives you an answer. does that frighten you Danielle? yes of course <laughs> <laughs> it does but um, what scares me a lot is the discussion I've just heard here because I think it's a never-ending story and we think it's uh, useful and we we have a good conscience because we talk about it, we, we think we have an ethical reflection, but it's always um, about the way you, you, you use it. And I think we, we should have a more fundamental reflection because uh, we are, first of all, we are talking in terms of impact. And I don't like the term impact because it reminds me of a meteorite fallen by a sheer accident in your garden and you have to assess its impact. It's very good, you have to do it. Of course, once technology does exist, you have to assess its impact. But more, but more fundamentally, uh, we have to wonder why we are developing these technologies. And I think, coming back to your discussion, that uh, there is a very old philosophical tradition um, pre assuming that we are imperfect. And now, with these technologies, we open the door to improve ourselves. So when we are talking about therapy, and it's the same in um, what you are doing. Right. Uh, I think it's the politically correct argumentation because we perfectly know that behind this, behind this, there is uh, augmentation. And if you try to put a boundary, it's artificial. Okay, all right, I understand what you're saying. I, there's so much to talk about here. Jay Keesling, uh, touch on, on that and what you think about it, but also touch on something else that concerns me, and that is, who gets access to this technology? Is it going to be universal or is it going to be for the rich? Well, certainly as, as the internet has expanded, everyone's going to be able to get a hold of this technology, right? Uh, if you consider, say, uh, engineering, doing genetics, everybody is going to be able to do that sooner or later. Um, and that has huge benefits because that will make it easier to engineer life. It also has a huge impact in terms of potential terrorists getting a hold of that technology. Yeah, it does. And, and, and what about uh, the societal impact of, of some of these changes? Is, is it not going to change society and, and who we are if we have artificial intelligence of some sort? Of course it will, but we are choosing it. It's, it's my point. It, of course it has an impact, but it's not like if it was here by accident and we just have to manage our life with it. 
we have to wonder why we are doing it. I think the change you are talking about are the changes we want. And when Joan was talking about uh, robots as nurses and this kind of things, I don't like it at all. But I think it's not the result. It's what we are choosing to do. We are building robots because we don't have um, face-to-face, uh, satisfying face-to-face -face relationships. So, so inter inter interpersonal relationships could change? That doesn't bother you? Well, I, I, I don't think that technology has enabled, I mean, it's there because our lives get, get better and get, get easier. And the relationships that we're going to have with technology is, is going, it, 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 there is going to be a question of the human to human relationship and machine, machine to, to human relationship. But I, I don't necessarily agree with, with all that you're, you're saying. I mean, technology has created more jobs and we can live a more productive life, we can live a higher quality of life, but it's up to us as individuals to focus on what we want to do with our spare time and what we, how we want to reap the benefits of, of development. And even what, what Jay is doing, I mean, the, the opportunity to be able to um, cure diseases at, at, where everyone could afford it is, is, <coughs> is an unbelievable thing. It's not separate from robots and AI. It's all merged together to, to help our lives. It's, it, it's a good point. And, and, and in fact, that's what we're going to do. Uh, nice lead into the next segment there. Putting technology to work inside the human body is just one aspect of changing nature in a way, manipulating our own cells and other organisms to heal and repair our bodies is another. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk about the truly amazing possibilities of stem cell research. That's coming up next on CNN's Future Summit. Don't go away.